Kelsey Smith, I'm an admissions counselor and recruiter at William Carey University on our Hattiesburg campus. Um, and so I recruit um, high school students um, in the kind of the northern half of the state of Mississippi, but also out of state as well. So I work with students from Alabama, Florida, we're getting some students from Texas as well. Um, so William Carey University actually has three locations. So like I said, the main one is in Hattiesburg. That's where I work. That's the one that has our dorms, a lot of our um, music programs and all of our athletic teams are based here in Hattiesburg. The tradition location is just a little bit north of Biloxi, Mississippi. We have our nursing school is there, part of our nursing school. Um, also part of our education department is there. That's where our pharmacy school is located as well. And then we have a location for transfer students that is located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in conjunction with Baton Rouge General Hospital. Um, so most of your students will probably wanna to come to either the Hattiesburg campus or to the tradition location. Um, so if a student is interested in William Carey and they've decided they want to at least apply there, how does that process work? When is the application open? What do they need to apply? Is there an application deadline? Can you walk us through that? Yeah, absolutely. So typically for our students, the application is going to open a year before they will apply. So for our seniors that are going to be graduating in May 2022, that application is already open. We typically tell students to apply as soon as possible. We don't necessarily have a deadline for our application. Um, usually around August the 1st is when we tell students that you definitely need to have all of your stuff in by. Don't wait till the last minute. Um, so they can go ahead and apply. Your seniors can go ahead and apply now. Um, it is an online application. It takes about five to 10 minutes or so, depending on your internet speed. Um, but that application is already open. Um, like I said, we kind of have rolling admissions. We don't necessarily have a strict hard deadline for our students that are wanting to apply. Okay. And it's August 1 before they enroll in college, not August yes, 1 before their senior year. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just to clarify. that. Um, so they would need, I'm assuming, their transcript, the application. And do they have to submit test scores or is William Carey transitioning to a more test optional as of right now, we are still requiring um, the ACT. Um, we okay. have started super scoring this past year. We started accepting super score. We will continue to do that for general admission to the university and to start earning an academic scholarship. Students need to have at least a 20 on the ACT, or I believe it's a 1020 on the SAT. So we accept both. Um, we do have a program in place for students who maybe have a 16 to a 19 on the ACT for conditional admission to the university we can still accept those students. Um, and we will take the ACT. Again, we don't have a December 1 cutoff for our ACT scores. Okay. We will take them all the way through the summer test date of a student's senior year. So even the students that are gonna graduate May of 2022, if their ACT scores, it's probably good, but maybe it's not quite where they want it to be. If they wanna take those test dates that are over the summer and have those scores sent to us, we will accept those for admission and for scholarships as well. Okay. That's good to know. So you said that 20 is where it's guaranteed admission? Is yes, that the ACT? Okay, and that's where the scholarships start? Is, it yes, ACT? is there a GPA yes, component to that? We typically just ask students to have at least a 2.0 GPA coming out of high school. Okay, and you mentioned super scoring for, I'm assuming admissions, is it also used for scholarships? That Yes ma'am. Super score, okay. Yes ma'am. I know that's benefiting a lot of students now. I it wish really you'd been is. around when we it were in college. Is. Those I know, extra, right? <laughs> extra one or two points could have really made a difference. Um, oh, yeah. So for academic scholarships, do they have to do anything separate or is their admission style what gets them those academic awards? So there is a scholarship academic. application um, that goes through our financial aid office. It is available on our website as well. It's a very easy scholarship application. It's essentially the student's name, a home address, a good email or phone number that we can reach them at and where they go to school. That's it. It's a very simple application. They can turn that in again, typically August 1 before they would start. So for our 2022 seniors, it would be August 1 of 2022. Um, and again, that's a rolling application. So if a student say goes ahead and applies now, wants to send in their current ACT score in that scholarship application, they can do that. If they take ACT again and it bumps them up to a higher bracket, they can still send us that score and we'll do another scholarship application and so they can keep bumping that scholarship up. Okay, um, that's a very, very easy scholarship application. That was what, four <laughs> yeah. or five fields? That's, yeah. that's yeah, very it's literally to... like four or five lines that they need to fill out. Yep. That's, 
That's easy. So in addition to academic, are there some other scholarship opportunities for students that they could get at William Carey? Absolutely. So we have um, scholarships since we are a Christian university, we are affiliated with the Southern Baptist Convention of Mississippi. If there are students who are called to any kind of ministry field, whether it be a pastor, music minister, youth leader, we have scholarships that are based in that area. We have athletic scholarships through our NAIA teams. We're NAIA Division I schools, so we offer athletic scholarships to those teams. And then we have talent area scholarships as well. So if a student is wanting to major in music education or one of our newer degrees, which is worship leadership or worship technology, or if they want to major in theater or art, those areas have scholarships that they can apply for or audition for as well. Okay, so it, there is a separate process, whether it's an audition or it's an application, some of those have different requirements. Yes, okay. Um, and then for other ways to pay for school, we know scholarships are always really important, but students also typically rely on some federal aid or maybe student loans. So they need to complete the FAFSA. Um, we always encourage students to complete it no matter what. I'm sure that you all encourage your students to do the same. Um, is it required for incoming students to have a FAFSA on file? It's not required for our students that are coming in to complete the FAFSA. Like you're saying, we do highly encourage it, especially if students are wanting to apply for a work study position on campus, whether it be in an academic office or our office, we utilize work study students in our office. We have a coffee shop on campus that is also student run. Um, so any of those work study positions, we highly encourage the FAFSA to be completed. And also like you're saying, for any kind of extra grants, um, especially like for MTAG or MESG, any of those Mississippi grants, we highly encourage the students to fill out the FAFSA as well. Okay, so it's not required for students. And then even for scholarships, if they receive an award, they don't have to have it on file? No, ma'am. Okay, um, if they are going to complete it, is there a priority date to have their FAFSA in? I would typically say probably about that same August, August the 1st one. kind of general deadline. Um, again, we do have some students, especially like for the academic scholarships, that sometimes it comes in after that August 1st deadline. It's not a thing of, oh, we're not going to award it. They just like to have them all completed and ready for the school year to start. Okay. So really for a student that's coming in next fall, that's a rising senior right now, they have almost a year and a half to get things done. If things open kind of like in the May timeline, they have literally the whole summer before senior year, their whole senior year, and then the summer after senior year to get the application, the scholarship application and FAFSA in. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma Again, we definitely time. hire, yeah, we definitely <laughs> encourage sooner rather than later, but we do open that up to give them plenty of time because senior year does get so crazy with all the different things that these kids are involved in. You know, there's all these different sports and hobbies and all these different things. We definitely want to give them plenty of time to get all of that yep. squared away. And if any students are watching this, that was not really permission to wait until August no. 1st. It's really get it in sooner, but if get something happens, than later. Yes, we will take absolutely. it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. sooner is always um, the better option when you're, mm -hmm. when you're talking money and applications. Absolutely. So aside from like, you know, the school portfolio and what it's about and how to pay for the school, we often get asked about housing. And housing works differently at every university in Mississippi. So with students asking us about every school, sometimes we're like, oh, how does it happen here? So can you walk me through when housing opens? What's the process? Is there, is there a housing deadline for filling it out and just how that works? Yeah. So our housing application for William Carey is going to open typically around January the 1st. Um, so for our incoming students, it'll be January 1st of 2022. Um, and again, definitely want to do that sooner rather than later, especially for some of our newer dorms. Those are going to fill up a little bit faster. We don't have year specific dorms. So like all the freshmen are not limited to one specific dorm or two specific dorms. Um, we have different ones. We have three kind of ranges of dorm options. We have community style dorms, which is what you would think of your typical dorm setting would be like you, your roommate, and then a hallway bathroom for everybody on your hall. Uh, we have two, um, a couple of dorms that are called our suite style dorms. So that one is you and your roommate. You have a bathroom that connects it and then two, you have two suite mates. So you've gone down to four people to a bathroom. And then we have one that's probably our most private style dorm. That is you, your roommate, and the bathroom just right there in your dorm. Mm -hmm. So that's just two people per um, 
her bathroom. Um, like I said, that application is going to open on January the 1st, again, sooner rather than later. There is a deposit that you'll put down um, when you complete the application. Once you've completed the application, then you will build, it's, it's kind of funny, if you have somebody in mind for a roommate, you can definitely put them down on that list and they'll try to match you up with them. If you don't have anybody in mind, for lack of a better term, it's almost like you build like an online dating profile um, where you put in like your name and where you're from. Do you like to stay up late? Are you more of an early bird? What your major is going to be? If you want to put like your social media handles, anything like that, you can put that in as well. And then that housing department will go through and match you with a couple people that they think would work the best with you. And you can exchange information. You can talk about, you know, who's going to bring what. If somebody has a TV or like a gaming system, something like that that you can bring. Um, they try to match them up as far as like year and even sometimes with majors. Um, but they're also not limited to only the athletes get to stay in the storm or only the people who are in the van get to stay in the storm. They try to match them up as far as schedule goes so that, you know, a nursing student who has clinicals and has to get up at five o'clock in the morning isn't with somebody who has all night classes and they're having to stay up late at night. So they try to match them up like that. Um, and I believe the, the deadline for that is um, sometime in May, I think it is, or maybe it's June. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that deadline, but we can definitely get that info. Um, again, sooner rather than later on that application too, January 1st of 2022. Um, and I feel like you and I have talked about this before. So remind me, um, is William Carey a very residential campus? A lot of the students continue to live on campus all four years that they're there. Typically they do. Um, we have about eight to 900 students that live on our campus here in Hattiesburg, I believe. Um, so we have a lot. I personally stayed on campus the entire time I was a student, absolutely loved it. Um, Cause it is a little bit of a smaller campus. You're not crammed in right on top of each other as far as the buildings go, but it, it's close enough to where if you sleep through the alarm and you wake up and you have 10 minutes to get to class, you can still get there if you live on campus. Um, so we have a lot of those. We do have a lot of graduate programs and some doctoral programs as well. So we do have a lot of commuter students, but the majority of our undergrads live on campus. Okay. Um, so outside of housing scholarships, a few things that maybe academically William Carey is known for. What are some of the really strong programs or maybe some of the ones that are more unique that students come to you for? Absolutely. So I would say probably our big three as far as the majors that we're really known for are going to be nursing, our education department, and then our school of music. So our education department has a lot of different areas that they go into. We're getting a lot of students that will come in and major in biology as well. Um, we get a lot of students that want to go to pharmacy school, physical therapy, they want to go to medical school or maybe dentistry school or vet school after they come to carry. And we have routes for all of those different programs within our biology department. Um, our nursing school keeps growing. They actually are about to move into a new 75,000 square foot building for our health sciences. So there's a brand new building going up for them and all kinds of brand new equipment that they're going to be getting. Um, so that program just keeps growing. And then our School of Music is actually the second largest school of music by majors in the state of Mississippi. So even though we are a smaller campus, we have, I think, about 180 or so of our students are music majors here on the campus. Um, so those are kind of the ones that we're really known for. Music therapy is one of our really unique degrees that is going to be like vocal, guitar and a little bit of percussion um, as far as the music side goes. A little bit of psychology and then some physical therapy. Um, that is one of our degrees that also has an internship built into the curriculum. So before you can graduate from William Carey, you have to complete a six month internship, whether it be here in Mississippi or Florida, Indiana. We've had a lot of students go a lot of different places. Um, we also have one called intercultural studies. So if a student maybe feels called to do mission work, um, that degree is built so that they graduate with two degrees in four years. So they will get that intercultural studies degree, but they will pair it with nursing or education or English or something like that to get them into whatever area they feel called into. Um, we also have a really cool Spanish degree um, where they can actually go and study abroad in Madrid, Spain. So there's a lot of really cool things that we have going on here. Again, yeah. just because it's a smaller school doesn't mean there's not always something going on. A lot of opportunities. I don't know if I was aware of the music therapy program. That is a really, really unique one. It's hard to find. Yeah, I think 
we're one of only two schools in Mississippi that do music therapy. I think it's us and Mississippi University for Women. Okay. Um, so anything else exciting about campus? I know um, we've talked a little bit about the arts. We've talked about some of the music. Are there lots of ways for students to be involved outside of the classroom? Absolutely. So we have about 40 different student organizations on campus, and there's usually something for everybody. Um, our Baptist Student Union is probably one of our bigger groups on campus. We also have a really great student government association. A lot of your majors are also going to have clubs that are associated with them. For example, that pre-med major, they have a pre-soma club, which they get to go in and talk to people in the medical school. They're already in the medical school. They teach in the medical school, so they can kind of see what they're going to be getting into. Um, we have two sororities on campus that are really community service based. We have a lot of honor societies on the campus as well. Um, we have a great Diamond Girls program. There's just always, again, just because it's smaller doesn't mean there's always not something going on. Um, homecoming is always a big event for us as well in a typical year. These past couple of years, it's been a little bit smaller. Um, but in a typical year, we actually will do homecoming with baseball instead of in the fall, like most schools do, because we don't have a football team. So we do it in the spring with baseball, and there's a huge crawfish boil, which is free for Cary students. Um, and a lot of alumni come back, and it's just a really cool thing to see where all these people have come from. And they either met at Cary or they started at Cary, and now to see where they've all gone to. Oh, that's, that's a cool, to do it in the spring is just different, mm -hmm. different environment. Um, so you alluded to the last few years have looked different. So we know that education, life, everything was disrupted over the last year. Can you talk to me about some of the things that William Carey has in place for students to help them transition to college, um, you know, and just do that successfully. So whether it's counseling services, tutoring, um, support teams, mentors, just those things that y'all have in place to help a student make that transition well. Oh, absolutely. So every, something that we do every year, again, this past year was a little bit differently, a little bit different, but this year we're hoping to get it back to normal is we have our carry welcome orientation weekend or carry wow every year. So our freshman students that come in, you get put into a small group of about eight to 10 other incoming students. You have two current carry students that will show you around and then you get a faculty and a staff mentor for the weekend. It could be somebody that's involved with your major. It could be somebody that's involved outside of your major. So you'll move in on Thursday. You get put into your small group. You meet your Carrie Well mentors, and they're going to show you around. We have a big opening ceremony that our parents come to as well. The next day, we have a lot of like rec games. There's something called Taste of Hattiesburg, where our restaurants come in and give our students a sample of what Hattiesburg has to offer them. And then on Saturday, they go out into the city of Hattiesburg and do community service projects, whether it be through our local Habitat for Humanity, our Salvation Army branch that we have here, um, or some of the um, local animal shelters. We do say you cannot bring any of the animals home. You have to keep them there. They have to stay there. Um, but they go out and do those different things. And then admissions does a fun event on Saturday night. And throughout the week, a lot of our local churches come in as well and speak to the students and tell them about the opportunities that the churches have for their college students as well. And then Monday is when the classes start. So by the time a student goes through Carry Wow, by the time Monday gets there, they're like, oh, I know what that means. That means it's going to be in this building. Oh, I know where this building is. They already know the campus almost basically like the back of their hand. They already know this and they already have that group of students that they've met and become friends with. They know some of the other faculty and staff here on campus and they know some of the students that are already here. That's um, incredible. So their first day yeah. of class isn't really like their first day on campus. They've exactly. actually spent time and made some connections already. So even if they are feeling a little lost or overwhelmed, they're like, oh, I remember this person from my yep. group and I can reach out to them. That's that's really exactly. cool. Exactly. Exactly. And we do have great student support services as well. And we have free tutoring on the campus for any student who may need it, regardless of their major regardless of you know whether they have a really high ACT score, or maybe not such a great ACT score, that free tutoring is available for all of our students. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so I think I mentioned to you before we started the conversation that we're going to send this out to counselors, college and career readiness teachers. It'll be on our YouTube playlist, so students may just stumble across it. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you want students to know about the campus or about the programs or just anything that you wanna share? 
Um, so most students probably don't know when we were established. We were established in 19 or 1892. So we're a little, we have some history, but we've got a lot of new stuff on the campus. Um, we have a brand new, um, our Tatum Court building is brand new. Um, so that's our main administrative building. It's only about a year or two old. We have a brand new student center that we just finished in March this past year. And so that has a brand new carry diner, a great game room for our students to take advantage of. Um, that's where our event space is. It's also where our BSU is located. And it is one of the newer buildings on campus. Um, that new health science building is also open as well. So just because we are a historic college and we have a lot of history, it doesn't mean all of our buildings are you know old and maybe don't have the newest technologies. All of this stuff is becoming brand new. Um, for our music students, we're also in the process of building and finishing up um, a recording studio. Okay. So for our students who are maybe interested in like our worship technology degree, that is gonna be something that they can utilize and start to get that real experience as they're coming in. Um, and so we've got that, we've got, like I said, new buildings going up almost every single year. We've added another one. Um, so there's a lot of growth happening at Cary.